Hey there, Michelle Mantor here. I published Pet Talk Magazine and about four months ago, I got two llamas. I decided that it would be kind of fun to have something exotic. A few quick things about llamas. They come from South America in the Andes Mountains. They're used for fiber and they're also used as a pack animal. They are part of the camelid family. So there's a camel, then a llama, and then an alpaca. Oh, that's actually not a llama. That's my husband who likes to pretend he's a llama, so maybe he'll get some more of my attention. You know, they're really kind of a cool animal. I like to say that when God put animals together, he had a bunch of leftover parts and decided to create a llama because essentially they have the nose or mouth of a rabbit and the neck of a giraffe and the feet of a prehistoric bird and they walk like an ostrich. And so they just have like a really lot of cool things about them. And here are just a few of the challenges with llamas. The other thing that I would say about llamas is there's this general misconception that all llamas spit. <coughs> like that. You guys do a good job with this. <laughs> we are yeah. answering your pet questions with experts from Gulf Coast Veterinary Specialists. They handle problems that your regular veterinarian might refer your pet for. Dr. Sue Chin specializes in birds. Dr. Audrey Pearson is a vet specializing in ophthalmology. And Dr. Rebecca Salazar deals with anesthesia and pain management. If you have a question, call us at 713-533-5230. All right, we just saw Michelle with her llamas. I know she did years of preparation before she got them, but I would imagine you get a lot of people who think, oh, I want that, that's so cute because it's exotic and it ends up becoming a problem. Yeah, it can be a huge problem because a lot of these animals have very specific needs. Like for example, the llama needs a lot of space, yeah. you know, or uh, in not a, an apartment animal. Not an apartment animal <laughs> at, at, at all. So um, if before you get any pet at all, even if a dog or cat, do your research, you know, as far as what's needed for the animal. A lot of our exotic animals do have specific needs, you know, yeah. especially the reptiles, but even our rabbits and guinea pigs and all your different birds, you need to make sure you have the right caging and everything for them. Yeah, so. all right. Uh, we have a question from Enrique, but before we get to Enrique, we have Pat on the phone. Good morning, Pat. Good morning. What's your question for our vets? Uh, we have, my son has a Swiss Mountain Dog, and we can't keep weight on him. His ribs and his backbone, he's very active. How old? And we need to know if there's something we can do specific to keep weight. Yeah, cause to keep weight on. How old did you say the dog is? He's a year and a half. Okay, so year and a half old dog, very active, but she feels like it's not keeping weight on. Is he is he intact? Has he oh, been neutered? Oh, in, I didn't know what intact meant. But I had to <laughs> think about that for a minute. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Has he been uh, neutered? Neutered. Just said he's no. Okay. No, you just said no. He has not been neutered. No, he has not. Okay. Okay. So. What are we thinking? So animals that um, have not been neutered or spayed, um, their requirements for food are actually higher, so their caloric intake is higher. Um, and oftentimes, if you do look at your dog food bag, it will show you how much you're supposed to feed them. Um, and so I think that's the first step is looking at the bag and making sure that you are feeding them the appropriate amount. And then you can kind of go from there and talk to your vet because it could be um, a medicine issue too. Like if your dog truly isn't Absolutely. gaining weight and you're providing the calories for it, that could be an indication of an issue. Yeah. So, What about a dog self-feeding? So they go to eat whenever they are, they're hungry versus you giving the, the dog its food. I think some dogs can tolerate that. Mm -hmm. Just probably like people, mm -hmm. you know, right. just yeah. different yeah. control. Um, some <laughs> <laughs> and some of them, if, you, some, yeah. you know, if you're not careful, they'll definitely overweight because yeah. we're definitely seeing an obesity issue. Uh, correct, yeah. Yeah, so the point you, you made earlier really makes sense that you, can tr you know yeah. what you're actually giving them. And if you think about dogs to wild dogs, right, they don't graze all day. Sometimes they only get a meal once a week, right? Yeah. And so yeah. dogs have evolved that way. And so it's, it's, and then also if you feed dogs set meals, you know exactly how much you're eating. Yeah. So when I feed Freddie, I can tell you exactly how much food Freddie is getting every yeah. day. Yeah. If you just put it in a bowl, you, don't, you know, sometimes you don't know. Yeah, yeah, and you'll lose track of it. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, Enrique says, my dog Rhea is terribly afraid of other big dogs. How do I make her confident enough to take her to a dog park? Oh. 
Behavior questions are hard. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And I guess sometimes habituation, just like with humans, like yes. the more they you kind of introduce them slowly right. and make sure uh, that they're okay, that they'll finally get used to something. So, because what, what, for whatever reason, uh, our dog right. could be afraid for all kinds of, maybe yes. been traumatized early on by bigger dogs, right? right. Yeah. It, and if you could also find like maybe a friend who has a really chill big dog um, that doesn't react to anything, sometimes that can help. Um, yeah. Um, just introducing slowly. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 All right. And then uh, Enrique had a second question. How do I keep her from digging in my backyard? Okay. Oh, now, gosh, now we're getting right. back to being a dog. Right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. right. Yeah. Because sometimes we, we have to understand, obviously, that there are certain habits they do that are not weird to them, right? right. Maybe destructive right. or weird to us. Right. But there are also other things you can do. I think especially with dogs versus cats, you tell me you're the expert, where you can, it's, it's easier for them once they realize not to do it which that can be mm -hmm. different things that you do, whether yeah. it's, uh, you know, the sprinkler comes on all of a sudden, right? Right, uh, Or right. Uh, a treat when they don't do yeah. it. Yeah, right. just that negative feedback or positive feedback, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. Uh, of course, when it comes time to planting plants, just send her over to my house because I, you know, she can dig the hole and I can just go ahead and put the plants in there. All right, Paula uh, says she has a fluffy 10-month-old and he's an explorer. He likes leaves, branches, rocks, and to bark at the wind. My question <laughs> is, he loves to eat grass. Is that okay for dogs to do? We oftentimes see, uh, oh, cute little pet, uh, oftentimes see where, where dogs and cats will eat some grass. What's that about? That's like the million dollar question. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> if you they meet if you meet anybody anywhere and they're like, "Why does my dog eat grass?" Yeah. I'm like, "I'm an anesthesiologist. <laughs> I don't want your dog to eat anything before I see it." Yeah. Um, so I don't know if we yeah, I, I mean, dogs are omnivores. So yeah, they're meant to have some vegetables in their diet. Yeah. That is a good point. We we yeah. keep thinking that your dog is you know from the wild needs to eat all this meat. Uh, just like with humans, too much meat, you're seeing that cause certain problems, right? Yeah, diets that aren't balanced um, or complete, you know, don't get, give the dog all they need. And so we do. We are starting to see health problems, heart disease, things like that. That. Um, where dogs aren't getting the nutrients they need because yeah. we're feeding them only one thing. Yeah, only yeah. the protein, yeah. which you mentioned they are omnivores. Cats, on the other hand, are carnivores. Okay. 